Is the screen visible, students? Okay, so uh, we were talking about this access specifiers. So what I said by default, agar tumme program mein, suppose you have written only one class and you don't have any one of this, nothing written over here. Suppose I have deleted it. I have a class declaration like this. Always your class is declared like this. Please remember this. You have a class followed by name of the class. Then open the curly bracket and then inside the inside this you will write your variables whatever you wanted to that you will write i can write int a comma b if i wanted to declare some variables okay this i should be in small like how you write it in your uh, c program so suppose if i wanted to declare two variables and i wanted to two or three variables i simple program agar mujhe likhna hai so i will write int a b c followed by so suppose I am writing A is equal to, this A should be in small, so A is equal to B plus C. And then I wanted to print the value of this. So to print the value of this, now here in C++, you don't have printf and scanf statements. You have a C out statement. C out, which is used to print your, which is a output stream. Output stream to print your output on a console. It is called as printing output on your console. Console matlab output screen pe tumara, uh, out, uh, sorry, on the output screen to get the output of your uh, object or a variable, you write it. So I will write C out A. And then I am closing this class, which is followed by what? A semicolon. Always remember that whenever you are writing a class, your class should always followed by a semicolon. Are you clear with this? Are you clear with this? Yes, yes ma'am. Yes, ma so this is a structure of a class. Always your class will have a class will open class will have a class name followed by a curly bracket. And don't forget that this class will always close with close with curly bracket followed by a semicolon. So this you should not forget. Abhi yaha pe, I have not when I have written this simple class, I have not written any access specifier over here. Matlab, I public bhi nahi likha and private bhi nahi likha. So if I have not written public and private in my class, so by default it will be considered as private. By default it will be considered as private. Are you getting? Yes, students? Yes. <clears throat> so kya hoga? If it is by, and if it is private. Kya tha, man? Kya kya? Yes. C O U T man. C O U T is C out statement. C out is a console output stream. To print your output on a console, you have the C out function. Like this, you have printf and scanf. Hai na, C out works same as your printf statement. C out is used to print your output on a console. Hello, ma'am. Ah, yes. C in Jorata was scanf just a use. Then you have to say. जो वेरिएबल्स ली वैल्यूज लेंगे हम लोग यूजर से तो उसको बी और सी में कैसे प्लेस करेंगे बिना सी इन के सी वी विल वी विल सी दैट अफ्टरवर्ड्स ना एक एक आई हैव टू गो स्टेप वाइज राइट डायरेक्टली आई कैन नॉट टेल यू टू राइट अ प्रोग्राम वेयर यू एक्सेप्ट द वैल्यूज फ्रॉम द यूजर एक सिंपल प्रोग्राम कैसे लिखना है पहले वो बोल रही हूं मैं वी विल गो स्टेप वाइज ओके कैफ ओके Later on, we'll see if I wanted to take the values from the user, how I'll, how I'll write the program. That also we will see. We have programs of that, that uh, part also. So now what I said, agar if I am not defining any access specifier, by default, this becomes private. With respect to the oops concept, this becomes private. So private hoga matlab kya hoga? 
it will be accessible only within this class outside the class it will it will not be able to access it abhi outside the class abhi ye class definition likha matlab tumhara program complete ho gaya it is not like that because you know that your c c++ program will not get executed uh, uh, executed until and unless you will not have main function yes or no your c c++ pro pro program always remember that they will not get executed until and unless you will not have a main function because you, in your compiler See, sorry for the disturbance in between. See what I said. Any of your C C plus plus program will not get executed until and unless you will not write your main function. A big class here. That doesn't mean that with that class your program will get executed or your program is complete. Nothing like that. You need to write the main function. So when we are writing a main function, for that main, अभी ये main function में हम लोग ये हम लोग को ये class को call करना है. so to call that particular class you know that function ko agar hum log uh, if we are calling a function in if you wanted to call a function inside the main we 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 we, we need to call that particular function if we wanted to execute a function we need to call that function in a main yes or no so similarly if i wanted to execute this class so what i'll be doing i'll be creating a object of this class okay and with that object then i'll be i'll be able to execute whatever the statements that i have written okay that we will see later on but abhi what i am telling i am telling you about the access specifier so by default if i am not if i am not written anything it will be considered as what it will be considered as private right otherwise i can make use of two access specifier that is public and private public means what public if you will write public that means inside that whatever the variables you will declare like after this class class name followed by public and then if i have if i have written int a comma int b then that a and b will be accessible outside the class also whatever you write whatever the methods variables you write under public access specifier that means that all that variables and functions or the methods will be accessible outside the class okay but if you write anything below this private the data members or the variables or the functions then that means that variables or the functions will be accessible only within that class and it will not be accessible outside the class <coughs> understood ma'am like global and uh, local variable i like global and local variable but global how you write global you write about top of everything right global means what yes. you write it top of everything but it is in in c++ it is not like that we are writing it inside the class but we are declaring them as public we are giving them as access as a public so that they can be accessed outside the class they will be accessible outside the class okay and private means only within that class because sometimes we may have a situation where we will be having a particular variable which need to be accessed only within the class and certain variables we need to access it outside the class also right so then there will be use, making use of this public and private access specifiers now remember that every class object has its own data members this i have told you every class object that you will create will will have its own data members which you have defined in your class right so and it has its own member functions also which are the same as other objects of the same class have so when member function accesses a data member by default the function accesses the data member of the object of which it belongs to so there is no special notation that is required for accessing the data members or the variables now see this example
here one simple method is written now this three slides as it is mentioned over here the next three slides will illustrate the concept uh, conventional concept of classes including general methods like get data and show data these are called as your getter and setter methods getter and setter setter methods are normally used in all your c++ programs like now as he has asked me kf has asked me if suppose i wanted to uh, as a user to enter the details as a user to enter the uh, whatever it is uh, enter the numbers how will i ask or how will i get the data so for that you need to have this getter and setter, setter methods you can write it without the getter and setter method also but it is convenient if you will write it with getter and setter method because it becomes easier to understand for a particular person if you write get getter and setter methods so what is this getter and setter method see now i have written a class person a simple class person create kiya maine okay inside which i have written a private access specifier in which i have declared two variables for that class person अभी पर्सन के लिए क्या वेरिएबल चाहिए मुझे एक तो आई वॉन्टेड टू नो द नेम ऑफ दैट पर्सन सो आई हैव क्रिएटेड स्ट्रिंग नेम नाउ स्ट्रिंग नेम यू विल नॉट यूज बिकॉज स्ट्रिंग डेटा टाइप समटाइम्स इट वॉन्ट वर्क इन योर सी प्लस प्लस सो वी विल राइट कैर एंड वी विल क्रिएट अ अरे ऑफ दिस कैर अरे ऑफ थर्टी आई होप ऑल ऑफ यूर अवेयर अबाउट हाउ टू डिक्लेयर एन अरे वेरिएबल Yes. Yes, ma'am. Because why I am creating an array uh, yes, of this name name variable? Because if I simply write char name, how many characters it will take? अगर मैंने ये array नहीं लिखा, if I have simply written char name, what does it will do? It will take only one name. it will take only one character not one name it will take only one character of your name like suppose here you are asking like enter that. name so in that enter name it will just take only one character of that name though you have type whatever your name is so if i type kf it will take only k ma'am i want it to take all the characters of my name so yes. hello मैम लेकिन आपने बहुत है कि मतलब सी प्लस प्लस में मतलब ऐसा नंबर्स देने का जरूरत नहीं है मतलब अपने आप ही सेट सेट कर लेगा नंबर कैरेक्टर्स के कितने बट अरे तो डिक्लेअर करना पड़ेगा ना अरे तो डिक्लेअर डिक्लेअर करना पड़ेगा ना सी आइदर आई हैव टू राइट इट लाइक दिस और आई हैव टू गिव दिस साइज इट्स वन एंड द सेम थिंग बट यू आर सेइंग दैट यू आर क्रिएटिंग एन अरे दैट नेम वेरिएबल इज नॉट अ सिंगल वेरिएबल इट इज एन अरे वेरिएबल When you are writing a square bracket, what does it mean? It's a array variable. Yes or no? Yes, ma'am. So here, if you want, you can define the size, or otherwise, even if you will not define, it's okay. But if possible, you define it so that it becomes easier. Because unnecessarily, then it will not in uh, it will not create a very large array size uh, variable. Okay. And then I need one more variable, which is int age. Now I have declared these two variables. So ये दो variable को हम लोग क्या क्या बोल सकते हैं C++ plus plus what it is called as? ये दो variables को हम लोग क्या बोलेंगे? They are called as data members of your class, or they are called as the member variables of the class. Yes or no, students? Yes, ma'am. they are called yes, as data members or the member variables of the class but the access specifier of them is what private then we have created another access specifier also that is public and inside which we have written a member member function void set data now set data ye kya hai function hai void set data is what your function see how i am knowing that it is a function because i have uh, i have open a round bracket and i have closed the round bracket and i have open that function body okay so set data is a function that you have written and that function you have written it in public so that means it is this function is accessible outside the class also so what you wanted to do with this set data i wanted to ask the user to enter the name and age so enter enter the name of a particular person for that i will be writing a c out statement that is c out slash and enter name and the next is what you wanted to except that name whatever the user will enter at run time whatever the name the user will enter you wanted to accept it so for that what is written 
C in name. So C in is your input stream. C in is called as input stream and C out is called as output stream. Input to your console and output to your console. What input you wanted to give it to your on your console? So whatever the user will enter, that name will be taken. That will be taken in that name variable and it will be taken, right? Then C out, same way you are writing one more, that is C out, enter age. You are asking user to enter the age also. And you will take that particular name. So this is like your printf statement. Here I just like same as your printf in C. And this is same as your same as can it in your C. Okay. And then this is closing your function body. Then I have void get data method. Void get data method matlab kya get data. Abhi, whatever the user has entered, you want it to display it. First time you just ask the user to enter it. Then I want whatever the user has entered, I want it to display it. So kya display karna hai mujhe? Name and age because these two are only the members of my class. So I will be able to display only these two variables, right? So again for displaying, you are using a C out statement. C out. Then this C, uh, whenever you are, uh, you are, one more thing, whenever you are using this C out statement, along with this C out statement, you have to use this less than, less than, less than, less than operator. This is called as your input stream operator. And this is what called as your, uh, sorry, this is what called as your output stream operator. And this is what called as your input stream operator. To take the output from the user. Sorry, to take the, to print something on your screen, you have this output operator. This is less than, less than, and you have to take the input from the user. You have this input operator, which is input stream operator, which is greater than, greater than zero. You have to use it twice. Okay, so this is this has to be used always with your C out and C in. Without that, your C out and C in, C in function is not complete. If you will not write that, it will not be complete. So we will not be using any round brackets and not writing anything. We just simply write this with this. Okay. Now, so next you are using this get data just to display it on your screen. So what you are writing? C out slash n slash n is same as in your C, uh, which is used for printing it on new line. Slash in, uh, all of you are aware about this slash in, yes? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, new line. So slash, ah, yes. slash in is used to print the output on the new line. You want to display the name. So this is the name variable which you have declared, name. And then on the same line with some tab, you wanted to give some tab, slash t is used to give the tabs. You wanted to display it also. So what is the name and age that will get displayed on one line with certain tabs. So age is also age will also get displayed. This all you are writing it inside the class. And then after that, once you have closed this get data method, you're closing your class as well with the semicolon. So this is what your class structure is, where you have private method, private variables and public methods. Are you getting how this particular class is written or should I explain it once again? Ma'am, can you explain that set data and get data once again? See, set data matlab, whenever you wanted to take any input from the user. See, without writing this function also, I can simply write this here statement. But just to make it sure or just to make it understandable for your user, like what are the setter and getter methods you have? See, I may ask like I have, a, if I wanted to do the, that, the simple example which we have seen, if, if I wanted to do the addition of numbers, but I wanted to do the addition of that numbers which the user wants to enter or for which the user want the addition to be performed. So whenever I wanted to do that, I will use the setter. And what it does, it, it, it will ask the user to enter his input. So inside that method, I will be sure that in that method, I will have all the uh, all the statements which will ask the user to enter the data and accept that particular data. So we'll be having C out and C in statement. So here also we have class person. So for class person, we want the user to enter that person ka name and person ka age. 
So for that, we are writing CR statement to enter name and then to accept that name, we are using C in name. Same thing, we are doing it for age. And once you have taken the data from the user, then to display it, you have the get data method. Okay. अगर get Slash T age. Slash T. Slash T is used for tab. Yeah. So give the tabs. See, I want that name and age to be printed on one single line only. But if suppose I will not use that slash T, what will happen? It will be it with case that name and uh, name and age both will be printed. But if I want uh, some space to be given, I can make use of a slash T. Or simply I can give slash N. But if slash N will be given, that age will be printed on next line different line <coughs> understood yes ma'am yes ma'am this program is not still not complete huh? we have just written a class so i am just making you aware about how the class is written our our program is not complete Okay. Now, next thing is this is another example you have. We will not see this one. You know what I will do? I will share that other uh, online compiler ka screen, and I will show you how we will write the program. Now I'll just show uh, before sharing that online compiler. I'll just show you one slide, online slides, uh, slide share. Is the screen visible, students? Yes. Okay. Now, before learning the C++ program, you just see the structure of C++ program. How exactly the structure of your C++ program is defined? So, always for your C++ program, program, first thing that you will write is write. Uh, right will be what your include files means your header files after that you will write your class definition then you will write your class function definition now this class function definition sometimes you may write it inside the class or you may write it outside Man, the class screen, not now it is visible it's not visible no, now it is visible. It is visible. It is even now, okay, now it is 
the structure of your C++ program, what it will do? This is the this structure. You always remember it. Always first thing that you will write it in your C++ program will be what your header files. That is your include files. After the header files, you will be writing your class definition as I have shown you in that PPT where you will be declaring your variables. You will be defining your functions or you will be declaring your functions. Then you will be writing a class function definition. Whatever your class function definition you have, whatever the functions that you have written, that function definitions you will write either inside the class or you may write it outside the class. That also we will see example wise afterwards. And finally, you will be writing a main function. Now, abhi ye main function, you can write it at the top also or you can write it at the end also. But first, first if you have de defined your class, then it becomes easier to write the main function based on that class. So that's why the, in the structure, the main function is given at the end. And as you know, your program execution starts from where? From your main. In your Turbo C++, your program execution starts from main. So this is a simple Hello World program where you have written See now here I have written this header file. This is the header file that is required for your C++ program. That is hash include iostream.h, which allows you to give to give you the access to your I libraries. That is iStream and OStream, uh, whatever I, I told you, iostream that are required for your C++ statements. <clears throat> so that will come this iostream.h header file. Then your main function. If suppose I am a C++ program without any class, uh, if I am writing a C++ program without any class, then I, I will simply have a main function where I'll be writing a main function body and then I'll be writing a C out statement that is hello world over here and then finally return zero. So like your C plus C program only, but instead of printf here, what you are writing, you are just writing. Um, you are just writing uh, a C out statement. So here when I'll execute this, see when I'll run this particular program. In the output it is showing me hello world. Now actually you don't have to write this std then scope resolution and then see out hello world. You simply write int main. This is the comment that you have. And then the hello world statement. If you are executing this program in Turbo C++, just listen everyone. If you are executing this program in Turbo C++, the first line that you will write is uh, you will write is hash include iostream.h. Here you will be specifying .h. Online compiler mein .h likhne ka zarurat nahi hota hai. Iske liye it is not written. You will be writing hash include iostream.h. Then sometimes you have to write using namespace. STD. Using namespace std to use the standard input output. Jo hum log see mein you, you were using that std io.h. To use that standard input, you'll be using this using namespace std. So if you have written that using namespace std, then there is no need to write that. So then in the main function, you simply write c out hello world. When you will execute, it will give you the same output. I'll run this. See, I am getting the output of hello FYT. Okay, this is a simple C program without the class. What we are writing? Why we are writing? That using namespace. That is what I said. Now using namespace std, we have to write to make use of a standard input output. So std io dot in. Abhi ham log std io dot h wo header file ham log mention nahi kar rahe. So using namespace uh, is actually giving you access to access that standard input output output file library also. 
जो स्टैंडर्ड इनपुट आउटपुट का लाइब्रेरी है टू एक्सेस दैट वी आर यूजिंग दिस यूजिंग नेम स्पेस एस टू ओके Even if you will not see before it was not there. I have added it afterwards. Even if you will not write that, your code will get executed. See like this, I'll be writing hello world return zero. यहाँ पे और clearly तो मैं दिखा रही हूँ इसके लिए. So when I'll run this, I will get the output. So this is a simple program that you have. Now just see here. So what all you have? You have a main function and return zero as you have used in your C plus uh, plus. Sorry, as you have used in your C language. When you are talking about C plus plus, C plus plus programs are also using preprocessor directories, whatever you have. temporary files then you are using c comp c++ compiler and finally you are executing the program so so input and output of c++ will be taken with c in and c out statement this i have shown you like whenever you wanted to take the input you will be writing c in and c out like simply if i wanted to show you in the program what i will do here inside main i will declare the variable int a comma b comma c i will write a is equal to b plus c and then i will write c out now i am using slash n a is equal and to print that see this this in double quotes jo mai likh rahi hu this is for printing and to get the value you have to write the variable so i will write a Are you getting? Suppose I have declared one more variable d, and uh, here I am writing d is equal to b minus c. And both the outputs, if I wanted to, I can show it in one single line also, or I can show it in different lines also. So here simply I will write slash t slash slash t. B is equal to not B. It is D. Now when I'll execute this, see now what happens now in this one. Now I got the garbage value. Why I got the answer as garbage value? Because I have not given any values to A, B, C. C uh, that B C. So since I have not given any values, it is taking uh, all the garbage values. Okay. So what I'll be doing after this, if I want to initialize them, I can write int a, int a and d. I have declared over here, and then I will write int b equal to ten. Hello, ma'am. Equal to t. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Ma'am, can you explain that uh, uh, slash t slash t d equal to one? Ah, wait. I'll make execute it and I'll show you. Now, see what I have done. Now I have assigned values. I have assigned value ten to b. I have assigned value three to d. And then I have written a is equal to b plus c and d is equal to b minus c. And I'm I wanted to print that values. Okay. A and d ka value mujhe print karna hai. Iske liye maine c out statement likha. Are you getting at least this code? See, this is what simply called as your variable declaration. Okay, this is what yes. variable declaration with initialization. You are initializing them with some values, and then this is what the operation that you are performing, and this is for printing values on your screen. So now, when I am running this program. Just sorry. So D it should be C. Okay. 
See now when I am running this program, I am getting a is equal to thirteen and d is equal to seven, and both the outputs I got it on the same line. Both the output same line में हैं. Yes. Why? Because um, I have used slash t. Slash t मतलब tab, and that tab is being used two times. So suppose अभी मैंने एक time का tab निकाल दिया. So can you see now only one tab is given. so both the outputs when you wanted to display it on the same line i will be using slash t agar mujhe dono output alag alag line mein likhna hai to what i will do what i will slash do is i will simply give slash n and i'll execute it again so then what will happen a i got it got it as 13 and d i got it as 7 understood the use of slash t yes yeah. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, in this program, in this simple program, we will see here in this program what we have done. <clears throat> we have given the values. Now, suppose I don't want to give these values. I don't want it to give these values. So, what should I do? I should ask the user to enter the values. Yes, students. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Now, tell me how will I write the program? What all changes I will do it in my program? Thank you. Hmm? What I said, see now, in the previous code, what I did, I have initialized the variables with some values. So B and C, co, I have value diya tha, and that operation only perform. Now I want user to enter a value, and they can perform this addition and subtraction for any values, whichever they want. So what should I do for that? I give a C N statement. Yes. No, no, you, you, have, you have to write C out, na? So first, you have to write. Yeah, you have to write a statement. Ha! You have to ask the user to enter the values. Then, yes or no? So you will write a C out statement, and you will write enter the values for B and C. And after that, you have to give the semicolon. That also you have to remember. C out statement will be always ended. C out and C in statement will always end with your semicolon. So here, अभी मैंने ये जब लिखा C out less than less than enter the values for A uh, for B and C. That means what? This will get printed on your screen. ये तुम्हारा screen में आएगा. Because C out क्या करता है? It it sends to the output screen. Whatever you have written or whatever you you wanted to print, that it sends to the output screen. अभी मुझे ये input user से लेना है. So to take that input from the user, I have to make use of see in statement. See in followed by greater than greater than symbol. I wanted to take two variables. So b a variable हो गया. I also wanted to take variable c. So I'll be doing it like this. Or I can write it c in b semicolon. And another separate statement. See, in. I can write it like this also. Are you getting students? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So now, when I run this, please, any one of you, please don't execute it now. These are the simple programs. I am just making you understand, so that you will come out of your C program now, and you should be able to understand the concepts of C plus plus directly. My classes se bhi nahi start kar rhi. i'm showing you one simple c++ program without class then we will move to classes because c++ mein abhi jo changes hai with respect to your c what are the changes you have in c++ first you should be familiar with that so that you will not get confused later on when when we'll start with the classes okay abhi if i execute this program see what happens now pehla wala c out statement aa gaya tumhara screen mein enter the values for b and c Yes, students. Yes, ma'am. Now your program will wait for user input. It will not get executed until and unless you will enter the values of B and C. So suppose B ka value, I am entering it as fifteen. And again, if I press enter, it will still wait. Why? Because it needs two input. Two bar tum tumne C in statement likha hai. Ya fir two bar tum log ye greater than greater than symbol use karte ho. So that means it needs two input. so it will wait for another value also suppose now i am giving another value as 12 and then if i press enter it will give me a ka value as 27 and b ka d ka value as 3 understood 
Yes, everyone clear with this? Yes, ma'am. So like this, yes. any programs that you have learned in C, that you can convert, all that programs you can convert to C++. You just have to change your printf and scanf ka statements. Printf, instead of printf and scanf, what you will be writing? You will be writing C in and C out. Now, Now when you are executing this in Turbo C++, Turbo C++ mein tumhe kya karna hai? If you are writing it in Turbo C++, as I said, here you will be writing hash include iostream dot h you will be writing. Then even if you will not write in Turbo C++, even if you will not write this using namespace std, it will get executed because Turbo C++ can uh, <coughs> can make use of that standard, uh, that standard input output library is already available in your Turbo C++. That's why you don't have to specify but here pe online compiler mein, since we have to get connected to that standard library also so that's why we have to make use of this using means specifically wahan pe abhi instead of int main you will be writing void main and instead of this return zero you will be writing get ch only that is the difference otherwise the rest of the code will be similar okay okay students See, so this is what they have shown like you have declared a particular value with the uh, you have declared a particular variable with the value or if you have assigned a particular value to a variable and if you simply write C or statement that variable will get printed like uh, here. See, you can simply write it like this also a is equal to 100 and then c out a or if you wanted to print it in a specific uh, way like what is this a you wanted to know kiska value print hua hai to iske liye hum log kaise likhenge c out value of a is and then you will write a okay so first in this case you will get the output as 100 and in this case you will get the output as value of a is 100 Okay, sorry, 10. In this case, it is 10. So, it, you will get the value of A is 10. So, this way, these are the ways in which you print your output. See, now here you have the same way whatever we have written, the program we have written. You, you have declared A is equal to 10, B is equal to 20 and you are writing C is equal to A plus B. So, in uh, C out statement, you are writing sum of. See now how this is written. In double quote, sum of is given. Sum of less than less than A. Then again, less than less than and b so it will get printed in that same way sum of what is the value of a 10 and what is the value of b 20 and is you wanted to print is c so what is the answer that you are getting it for c that is 30 so this way also you can print it or you can write it in this way also sum of two numbers is equal to a plus b so these are the different ways in which you can write your output See like here, if I'll not write this one. I'll simply write only A is D. 
स्टिल आई विल गेट द आउटपुट बट वहां पे क्या होगा वो वैल्यूज जो आंसर आएगा यू विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड व्हाट दिस वैल्यूज आर और दिस वैल्यूज बिलोंग्स टू व्हाट सो इफ आई विल रन दिस आई हैव टू एंटर द वैल्यूज ऑफ बी एंड सी सो 20 एंड 10 सपोज मैंने दिया सो आई एम गेटिंग द आंसर बट सी व्हाट हैपेंस आई एम गेटिंग द आंसर एज 30 एंड 10 20 plus 10 गिव्स मी 30 एंड 20 minus 10 गिव्स मी 10 तो ये आंसर करेक्ट है बट सम ऑफ यू मे कंसिडर दिस एज अ न्यू वैल्यू एज थ्री जीरो वन जीरो थ्री थाउजेंड टेन आई यू गेटिंग सो टू प्रिंट यूर वैल्यूज इन मोर अप्रोप्रिएट वे वॉट यूर डूइंग यू आर प्रिंटिंग दैम इन दैट इज यू आर प्रिंटिंग दैम इन डबल कोर्स फर्स्ट एंड देन यू आर एक्सेसिंग दैट वैल्यूज सो राइटिंग ए इज इक्वल टू एंड this way you can write or otherwise the other way is what c out sum of b plus c is equal to you will write b plus c here itself agar tumne b plus c yahan yahi pe likha so then you don't have to write it here are you getting you can write it in this way so now if i'll execute this values for b and c so again i am entering 25 and 10 so sum of b plus c is 35 this way also i can write the expression in my uh see out statements whenever in see out statement whatever you write in double quotes that will only get printed and without double quotes whatever you are writing that is variables or what that operation will get performed remember that also okay clear with all these concepts yes ma'am yes ma'am now uh, these are certain tokens identifiers that you have in your c++ which are similar like your c language like c++ has <coughs> reserved keywords that is it has predefined functionality and c++ has 48 keywords in in all in general in total and all these keywords are written in only lower case you have to remember this there are 48 keywords used in c++ plus plus and all the keywords are in uh, lower case so what are these reserved keywords you have this like uh, this case structure which you have used in your c so that case structure is there delete is the keyword that you have reserved keyword you have in c++ plus plus which is most widely used delete boolean break and enum ye break ka bhi b b uh, will be in small and enum ka e also will be in small then const else float if int virtual protected static friend try volatile continue uh, you don't have to make use of this asm so for inline template operator public struct throw catch switch while type def this size of sign long registered auto also you don't have to use extern default character do union unsigned class double go to return new private and short these are all the reserved keywords that you have in c++ so some of the keywords you have used in your c also identifiers like uh, identifiers are actually nothing but what they are the design tokens programmers tokens they should be meaningful and short and uh, they should be long enough to understand okay so c++ there are certain rules you have for identifier that is the identifier should be always alphabets digits and you should use alphabets digits or underscores should not start with your identifier should not start with any digit it should be case sensitive unlimited length and it can be declared anywhere what is identifier any variable that you declare that is what called as your identifier any variable that you write it in your program that is your identifier yes or no so that variable should always consist of what alphabet digits and underscore but it should never start with what digit 
or it should never start with the underscore also sometimes it works with the underscore but that is not a proper way of using it then literals is nothing but what the sequence of characters that represent constant values to be stored in a variable so there are c++ literals are integral literals floating point literals character literals and string literals they are written it in this way so the sequence of characters can be written in this form then this enum keywords and all we will see it afterwards operator also we have a separate chapter on operators where you will be learning what are the new operators that are available in your c++ like in your c you have arithmetic operators you have logical operators you have assignment operator but along with that there are so many other new operators operators you have in c++ which you can use it in your program like you have this increment decrement operators conditional operators scope resolution operator new delete and del set w these are also the operators that are available in your c++ okay so we'll stop here for today in the next lecture i'll show you how to write the class program okay so now here afterwards i will not be using any ppts i'll be directly using this online compilers or turbo c++ where i'll be writing a program and all the concepts i'll be explaining you through the program one request when we are in the in the lecture you please don't uh, start your turbo c++ or don't try to execute the program along with me in the theory lecture you please understand the program whatever i am writing whatever are changes i am doing how i am getting the output you please listen and watch that why because the same thing we are going to do it in the practicals and in the practicals i am not going to explain you the programs again because all that programs explanation i will do it in the lecture itself i will show you what are the errors that that you that you will get if you will do any changes in the program that also i'll show you so during theory lecture you please don't uh, Uh, don't uh, try to execute the programs you just listen you just see what is happening on the screen and at the time of practicals i will give you a time to execute each one of the program and see what, what are the things that are happening okay is this clear to everyone yes ma'am ma'am can you share the ppt who want to make an option ppt okay i'll share ppt i'll share it in your teams ka files okay by today okay. or tomorrow i will share it okay okay thank you everyone you can leave now thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am thank you ma'am yes bye everyone thank you ma'am